You're listening to Miscast Commentary. Hey everybody, welcome to Miscast Commentary, a coming attractions episode. I am Joe Finley. Todd Tebow, the Sailor Murray. Hey baby, how we doing? Doing what the disembodied voice of Tebow. I know, we are over Zoom Ooh. right now. And uh, just went through a slew of shitty, shitty technical problems. And uh, here's hoping that uh, we we're done with that. I don't know what it is, man. Do. When we start doing this, like my feet are so itchy. Yeah, um, that means we're going to Hollywood, baby. That means that's gonna be amazing. Uh, <laughs> yes. Is that what that means? Uh, yeah. Uh, all right. So, so many things to talk about in this episode. Something we talked about earlier that nobody's got to hear. Uh, the Mortal Kombat trailer came out. Oh hell yes! That thing looked bananas good. Yeah, that movie looks totally. I mean, it looks dumb. Yeah, but it but looks like everything it needs to be. It it's everything that the original one was missing. It was like it's like yeah, proper, well yeah, violence. The proper kind R. of violent, uh, and it's just swears. Yes, the swears. Swear, and I heard that uh, in the DVD when you you know when it comes out on DVD or whatever, uh, you get it's the unrated. And you get to see Zoro or Zor- Goro's dick. I hope so. And it's actually f- loincloth. And it's four dicks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, dude, he's got four hands, right? It, well, yeah. <laughs> or is it, it six? No, I think it's. I think it's four. Yeah, yeah he go. grabs you with one, and then it's like, a, hunter, it's like a penis hunter. Yeah. Oh, so that looked amazing. Uh, you were talking. Finish him. You were talking a little bit about the Marvel uh, ones that you saw. Oh, yeah, I watched, like, all of them. Yeah. Just right, you know, once I saw the old Mortal Kombat there, I saw all these other ones. I saw uh, Hawkeye, which stars the very beautiful Haley Steiner. You know, like, the, the you know, <laughs> she changed her name because she's related to the genetic freak, uh, Scott, <laughs> Scott Steiner. <laughs> but anyways, it's got Haley St- Stein- Steiner. Stein- now I don't know how Stein- to say her goddamn name. Steinfeld. But anyway... Bishop, yeah, and she plays Haley St- Haley Steinfeld. What's the deal yeah. with all these arrows? <laughs> yeah, exactly, the Hulk throwing else... cars all over the place, and you're shooting bow and arrows. Boom, 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 boom. There was uh, what else was a low key was pretty nifty. Yeah. Um, Black uh, Widow looks really good. Actually, Taskmaster's totally badass. I'm looking forward to that one actually a lot, and I. I think it's good that they've delayed it, but I don't know how much longer they're going to delay it. I don't know if they're just going to bite the bullet and let it get released on uh, Disney uh, uh, Disney Plus. But I I don't know if they feel like they're like doing yeah like uh, come on just put out uh, No Time to Die on TV already. I know, right? It's so long. Well, well TV has today No Time to Die. Well, and, it's all cut, and they passed up good money. To go on Netflix, I think like they were offered like six hundred million. That's bullshit. That's how much that other movie was offered. Yeah, like they offered James Bond the same as that other piece of crap. <laughs> Whatever one it was, they just paid six hundred. You know what? Martin yeah. Scorsese said the same thing, and I agree with him. There's yeah. too much streaming. There's too much wanted content, and yeah. it's getting it's getting watered down. Yeah, oh, I don't disagree with that, but I think the big problem is the fact that there's no other way of consuming it right now. Like any yeah, but other I mean, time? Like the, the, the theater was like the filter of like, you know, yeah. not they, they weren't all awesome, obviously, but, no. you know. No, and I get that, but like right now there's no theater. So it's like, you know, it, it's now waiting, like how long do we sit on this thing before we can... You know, pull the old trigger. Exactly. Right. And so like because I mean, they've Disney, especially probably more than anybody else has, uh, you know, had to do that a couple of times now with uh, uh, Mulan and uh, that was fine. Yep. Did you see Mulan? I did see Mulan. Yes. Nah, was I... It was fine. But yeah, it's it. <laughs> what it lacked is they made it too real. In that, like, all the things that were magical about the cartoon were just all gone. We're like, oh, don't worry about yeah. the dragon. Don't worry about this or that or the other thing. It's just it's just Mulan. And, I mean, there were scenes that were, like, cut right from it that were beautiful. And there was and it was, like, a well-shot, well-directed movie. It looked but, nice, oh, but it was, I don't yeah. know. 
no absolutely just felt it went through the steps like way too fast mm -hmm. you know suddenly she's fighting uh Mowgli there and then you know <laughs> cross well, going down but you know what the, the HBO Max is a lot of good looking movies coming out yeah and uh, I don't have it no. like Mortal Kombat that's going to be on HBO Max isn't it I don't know. I just saw the trailer. I think I, it is. It's, it's the WWE. Yeah. Yeah. Then probably that would be the case. Um, Mortal Kombat, Tom and Jerry, the yeah. Snyder Cut. That's like five movies in that. one. <laughs> I guess I don't, I don't know the whole story, but I read it uh, just the beginning of an article today. And it was something about like Snyder was trying to, uh, he was trying to pitch a, prequel to batman versus superman as a con like if to the comic people and they're like no thanks oh my lord yeah like, we're we're fine we we know oh, thank you we actually know how to do batman and superman so we'll just uh we'll stick to us you do you um interesting little thing too i'm i'm i think the only dc thing because i mean dc has a hard time making me excited about anything but i'm still excited about suicide squad just because there's so much going on oh, and, it's James James Gunn, Gunn, man. and it's like and there's people like just people came out of the bloody woodwork to be in this thing you know what i mean like taika watiti's in it and uh idris and sean gunn how did john james gunn cena. get shot john cena like you know but still enough of a crossover like um uh, Viola Davis is still Amanda Waller. Uh, Margot Robbie is still Harley Quinn, and apparently, she's apparently she plays her differently. Yeah, I was gonna say I heard she was kind of, she kind of rebooted herself, which I kind of get because after like the the first two movies you were in with her weren't well received, despite the fact that you were well well received in it. Like I can kind of see her go, oh, okay, well maybe I'll create a new dyna dynamic or something. I don't know. Maybe she's going to be like more like, hi, hey, Mr. J. She'll be more like the cartoon. Uh, that could be that could well be. I don't you know, know. The cartoon version of her. The Yeah. I don't, I don't know from any uh, Joker. The cartoon rules. It yeah, it's really good. It's really good. Um, speaking of more movies coming to streaming and stuff like that, though, that Star TV thing is coming to Disney Plus. Uh, actually, I believe... Yeah, it'll be out by the time this episode drops. So, it is? Uh, yeah, the 23rd is the first day. And so all of Today's that. the 23rd. What? No, by the time this drops. Oh, drop it like it's hot. Yes, this comes out on Tuesday. Oh, yeah, steaming hot. So tons of movies. And Disney did the thing that everybody said that they definitely weren't going to do, which is put rated R content on their streaming service. Yeah, apparently Deadpool 3 is going to be uh, rated R as well. They they did say that. Well, he, yeah. it's, it's so funny because when Disney came out, everybody was instantly like, oh, Mickey Mouse is going to be a Jedi, blah, blah, blah. And they're going to do all these like kiddie oh, things to him. And then uh, he should be. I mean, they saw the magic he did in Fantasia. Uh, and that was with, you know. He, that was a sorcerer's apprentice. He was very lowly trained and he had all that, you know, he had like Ray levels of uh, natural ability. But He was still using the Force though. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, or the Force was using him. Ooh. But that's, that's for my next book. Um, then, uh, yeah, then when Marvel came, they're like, instantly, the first thing they said is like, oh, they just ruined Deadpool because Deadpool's going to be PG-13 and it's going to be all kitty and it's going to be whatever. And then, so they had to actually come out and go, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> so it, I don't know. It's, it, it's frustrating because nobody is willing to see what a company is going to do with the thing before they, they just decided they're like, Disney's going to make these decisions. Uh, that's, what they, that's what they do with everything. That's how everything works. I know it's so bloody toxic and just horrifying. I love reading the comments at the bottom of anything. And it's the people who get into the dumbest, especially like wrestling websites and even like video game webs. You go to the bottom and they're just like the, the dumbest conversations that they're, they're just arguing about the dumbest things ever. I know. I know. And I love it. I absolutely love it. Like to actually take the time to like sign in. Yeah. Just so you can respond to some freaking idiot. Like I legitimately want to like monitor my blood pressure while I'm like reading comments on, on Twitter and stuff like that. And I bet you it friggin' skyrockets. It drives me nuts. <laughs> Garrett fucking T. Oh, so bad. Um, more things coming to Disney Plus. The Muppet Show 
just dropped. Are they paying you for this? Are we getting paid for this? Yeah, I, I, they better be. I'm just talking about things in pop culture, and guess what's not happening right, right now? Movies. So we got to do that streaming. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, The Muppet Show, the entire series just dropped on. Oh, uh, I just Plus. saw that, yes. That's awesome. I didn't watch it. I saw that it was there. I know. Oh, it's so good. People have been waiting for a long time to oh, see Oh, hells it. yes. And if it's well-received, I mean, the chances of them creating more of the Muppet show, not like a new Muppets now, but like just a proper ass Muppet show. Uh could I would love that. I, I like they're like this is the new edgy. Yeah. You know, and it's like Kermit's a drug dealer and you know, <laughs> P- Piggy, Miss Piggy's like hooking on the streets and <laughs> I think but, Gonzo, Gonzo would just obviously be pimping chickens. Yeah. He's in that weird dark alley biz yeah not like the lighter part of the alley where the regular people hook this is Mm -hmm. the dark part like the dark web yeah and uh go to my go to my little side hustle of a uh youtube video that i did and i recast a lot of the muppets as uh real actors what you did yeah you can check that out on the way and uh so i I'll, i'll I, I don't really want to spoil for people. Did you cast any Shia LaBeouf? Shia LaBeouf didn't make the list. He didn't make um, the list, eh? Okay, I'll give you... I, I put in Rebel Wilson as Miss Piggy. She's not... She doesn't have to be fat. That's not the point. Oh, she'd be offended. She be well. That's nobody what I'm will want to play Miss Piggy. Well, this is what I'm It'll saying. It'll have to be like, you know, who... who Unless you cast a skinny actress that will put on like the fat suit, like Norbit. Yeah. Well, to me, like I was only casting people who could capture the essence of the character. It's that they don't have to look like them. It's not a friggin' lookalike contest. It's just. Uh, so, I, I don't know. No, I think that's bad casting. That's garbage. Really? Um, I th- miss Piggy. Because like mm. I, I think about her, especially in like Pitch Perfect. It's the person who's so so much more on the outside that she thinks because she has such confidence in herself right and that's kind of okay, where you I, know what i don't want to get into it but yeah okay yeah. great great pick whatever whatever <laughs> fuck you <then. laughs> uh, but yeah anyways you can go that's the muppet the league yeah people can go uh check that out i'll put the link in the show notes so you cool can go and find that's that. cool um, yo let's talk about wandavision oh dude so good it is it, it it's just getting better and better. It's opening up so many more things. Uh, I was saying to Todd just prior to uh, us going live what, that I was, I watched it or I hadn't watched it like right when it came out and I saw overnight, like all these things were uh, uh, trending like John Krasinski and Magneto and all these different things. I'm like, fuck, like what am I missing? <laughs> and I panicked, but like none of those things actually happened. It was just a lot of people going. Except like, for the I think panic, gonna... the panic actually happened. The panic happened because I'm always yeah. panicking. So, <laughs> but the panic the also was frenzy. New. Yeah, that just wasn't new. That's just what it was. Um, but yeah, no, fantastic episode. We're getting a little bit deeper into it. We find out that Wanda's not the only person behind the magic and everything, all the craziness that's going on. Yeah, because there's like scenes where she's like, what's happening? Where like, it's yeah. like, you think, you know, she's the one controlling everything. But every now and then she's like, why are you here? What is this or what? You know? Yeah, exactly. And then, okay, so right after I watched the end of the, oh my God, you know, before it came out that it was Agnes. Yeah. Um, I was literally thinking, uh, especially in the episode where she's sitting in the car and Vision comes up to her before he leaves the, tries to leave the the force field or whatever. Yeah. And I was just thinking, man, she's such a great actress, man. Like she's oh. so good. She's been good in everything. Like she, everything, like, everything. She always knocks it out of the park. Like, and even going uh, all right the way back to said, Step Brothers. What's that? Even going back to Step Brothers, like she was such a friggin' standout in that. Oh, totally. And uh and the goods. She's absolutely amazing oh, in the movies of goods. You haven't seen it. It's so yeah. funny. It, yeah, it's way better than I would give it credit for. Like just looking, <laughs> like uh, judging a book by its cover, you're just like, eh, really? Oh, I know exactly. Um, but man, the movie's so wicked. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's, it's anyway. So, movie. so I see that it's Agnes, mm-hmm. and right, right after the episode's done, I'm like, I am gonna look up this character. 
Yeah. And before I started, I was like, you watch, it's going to come up. No problem. Because everybody that watched this episode just did the same thing. Yeah. I typed in a G and the whole character name came up. It was the number <laughs> first thing. Yep. Agnes, whatever. So anyway, she's a super powerful sorceress. Yes. Uh, I don't know. Obviously we don't know what her game is, but this yeah is pretty much almost taken right out of one of the comics. Yeah. And I all... read the Wikipedia and it was like the same kind of scenario where she had Wanda kind of trapped in this domestic yeah. uh, kind of existence. Mm -hmm. Well, and what's even crazier is, well, not crazier, but just good to see is that this is actually based out of the Fantastic Four. Yes. She yeah, is, that's what it was. Yes. She is connected to the son of Reed Richards and Sue Storm. And, uh, well, it was in the comics. I imagine they're shifting things because I don't think they're going to have older Reed Richards and Sue Storm, like that level of old. Uh, right. So I'm uh, looking, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward uh, to that. And I think that's where that John Krasinski thing came in on because they people probably looked that up and saw, oh, Fantastic Four. So I was like, we're going to have a Fantastic Four tie-in. I don't know yet because, like... Um, uh, Elizabeth Olsen teased like a huge like reveal like a cameo kind of reveal or whatever now Evan Peters has already come on since then so it's like okay what did she mean him or are we still going bigger and it's like the the knowledge or the lack of knowledge of that is just like like has me so on the edge of my seat the story well, in, awesome. the, in the comics yeah. she and Quicksilver are the children of Magneto yes Magneto is going to show up. That's my guess. I think that, yeah, I think that, that you're going to find that out. And I think they're going to tie in a, well, it's going to be one of two things. You're either going to pull him over from the other dimension. Uh, where, like in that dimension, they have different parents. Or. Cause when that was... in this dimension that they're in now we're in yeah. watching what they have no mutants. So they have to be coming from another dimension. Well, I think I, I have a feeling it's going to come from that, but I think that like, you'll find that like some people might pull over and some people might pull just over, pull over. Yeah. I'm out. Exactly. This is it for me. Exactly. Fuck this. But, <laughs> but I think that some may also just come from, uh, what is it? The, like they might be a byproduct of all the craziness that happened. Right. Like, mutation might just be a thing, but then some people like who are probably older or whatever might've already had it, or they might've had a level of the superpower. And now it's like, it's, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't want to try and explain it for them. I've, they've done a pretty good job. They haven't failed us really so far. So I'm going to uh, give them the benefit of the doubt and see where it goes. Oh yeah, it's gonna be good. I, I think that. Do uh, you think that they're actually uh, Vision's kids? Because at the one point she's like, they have th synthetic skin. Like you have thick skin. Well, well, they did. Are show... they really his kids? Yeah. Uh oh, that's the thing too. I'm not I... saying she cheated or anything, but the whole thing might be an illusion. It could be, but or I'm something, also... right? But I'm also reading more about this Agatha Harkness, and it says right here during the 12 issue, the Vision and the Scarlet Witch series, which was from 85 to 86, uh, Agatha's spirit gives one of the idea to use magical powers she's channeling to become pregnant mm. and then uh after after the kids are born a newly resurrected agatha agatha confronts wanda about how her children are not quite real wow so, and then there's and then if you like keep going down and keep going out down it starts to connect to mephisto uh, yeah, that's what I was reading too. Like there could be Mephisto's kids, and so, and then they, they were talking about like because Quicksilver keeps mentioning like, oh, this is nicer than hell, or or two things. Go, my demon spawn! Right yeah. when they were going trick or treating, mm -hmm. like, be gone, my demon spawn, which yeah. actually might be the truth because they might be the children of Mephisto. It's very very possible, and but again, it's just one of those shows. I mean, we're coming up on like that was episode seven, and I think there's ten episodes, so we're coming up on the end. And it's like, oh, man. Oh, uh, They're probably just swerves, too. Like, they're trying to, you know, give little nods to the history of the story and the comics, mm -hmm. right? So it might not be Mephisto, but I thought that was neat that people had picked it out. Like, it was kind of like a wink, I think. <laughs> I think they should do the biggest fuck you. And the, the last shot of WandaVision is Robert Downey Jr. waking up from a dream. And you find out everything after Age of Ultron was fake.
Like not a, it was all a dream from like civil and war. And all the care when he wakes up too, right? So it shows him like, oh god, I'm awake. And then the camera will pan out, and there's like Scarlett Johansson. And then it pans out further, and like Pepper's there. And when it keeps panning out, it's a gigantic bed because it's Robert Downey Jr. And yeah. all the dead characters are in bed with him, and it was all a dream. Nice. And but it not was, the orgy. Before. I was just gonna say it. It was. Uh, it was also all an orgy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly so the avengers so happy's wa- yeah happy's walking around the bed taking drink orders <laughs> i hope that this doesn't end with well if if the children and everybody become real that's what i'm hoping that vision somehow is alive or that's, somehow comes to life or whatever because man yeah. he's so killer like they killed him way too early i know well that's the thing and i'm i am hoping for sure that they are keeping him around or finding a way to keep him around and it sounds like one way or another they're going to because they were already working on bringing him back like that's like the other thing they revealed is that the uh the military guys the sword guys were trying to uh revive him themselves right yes so, to try well because he was uh, everybody's under her spell yeah so or actually it, agnes is possibly right we don't know it could yeah who knows but i'm i'm looking for i'm really looking forward to the end well not to looking forward to it ending but just to see how it turns out where it goes i agree mm-hmm. and and then hopefully that should lead in well to uh dr strange and the multiverse of madness it's totally going to absolutely like they're gonna mm-hmm. he's gonna have to do something or she's gonna go so nuts that she breaks into it or something happens Happens. yeah they're gonna just run hey what are you doing here in the multiverse <laughs> of madness hey, fancy seeing you here babe yeah i hope they i hope they say that phrase a lot in the movie what are you doing here in the multiverse of madness <laughs> exactly yeah wait a second okay you know what what yeah exactly yeah got it exactly there it is. Um, no, i wanted to talk about f9 oh yeah tell me all about it because oh, i did not see this oh my god what a preview i had a good segue you said something and i was like oh there's my segue and then you can't do it i was like frick oh i'm sorry but anyway so my segue is hey let's talk about fast nine <laughs> um so oh my god what a preview yeah and like i said it should be ff9 and then in brackets mean muggin mean muggin or like electric boogaloo but mean muggin like <laughs> oh my god this means like the slow reveal the action looks ridiculous which i like but the yeah. movie's just like he's your brother like the whole first part he was like family's definitely me oh. you know and there's like friggin uh vin diesel always every friggin that's so so me and my family have been through a lot. Yeah. And now, just when we thought we could settle down, like, past comes back to haunt me again. Oh, good God. And then, and then it's like, you do, pew, pew, explosion, car flying. I know. And then it's like, he lives with Michelle Rodriguez now, and they've had children. Yeah. If you've heard his techno album, he ain't having children with anybody. <laughs> Like, no way in hell. Anyways, he's playing yeah. a character, Joe, okay? I'm, Even though it doesn't matter how, you, you know, ridiculously. What's that? What did I do? It, you you were there. That's oh, okay. why. I'm sorry. Um, I had to place the blame on somebody else. I get it. Um, Yeah, the movie just looks so unbelievably, like, ridiculous. But it's just, well, you got to see the preview. Man. It's just like, oh, my. And then at the end, it's like, look who shows up, Tokyo Drift guy. Yeah. And he's like, yo, guys, I'm not dead. And yeah, we're family. Let's go do this. So that's what cool. That's what's crazy to be because there was all this stuff about Han, and it's like Han is back, and I'm like, okay, it's hard enough to make a plausible like back from the dead in a Marvel <laughs> movie where like there's magic and aliens and dimensions and all this stuff, and like this one, they've done it a couple of times now. Yeah, it's like what it's like letty's dead no by the end of the next movie letty's actually alive it's fine it's like but i watched her face get ripped off now i'll ask you yeah, it's like well, no you didn't that was yeah. just some girl yeah. that looked just like her oh yep. yep you blinked and they were switched that fast <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly now the real question is would you be surprised like like on a scale of one to ten how surprised would you be if you just found out that the car that John Cena drives is a transformer in this movie. Oh my God. I would not be surprised. No, it's and just like, also, yeah. don't be surprised in fast 10 yeah. when Paul Walker comes back. 
probably <laughs> boom well, mind blown there were a ton of uh rumors that they were going to try and include and like using like old footage and old dialogue and but then using his brother as like a like his real life brother as a uh body double and stuff that they would try to include him in some scenes just to show that he's still out there somewhere uh that was a very funny thing that somebody pointed out in fast eight because he has that kid which he had with the like brazilian chick yes and he hadn't named like the babies through the whole movie but he had never named the baby and then so at the (laughs) end of the movie he's like i'm i finally decided on the name for the baby the baby's name is Brian and everybody and it's supposed to be like this big emotional thing because <laughs> Paul Walker had died but here's the thing he didn't die in the movies so he's not no. like he's not like honoring the dead by doing this he's basically <laughs> naming it after his friend who should be at that party but didn't show up right because there's no reason on earth <laughs> that he wouldn't be there yeah true so it's because he did live because they filled in his brother did fill in in fast 25 or whatever it was yeah when paul walker died during the filming right just in that like there was a he lived in that movie yeah yeah oh yeah he lives at the very last shot of the movie is him uh dom and uh brian driving side by side and he looks over and it's a horrible fucking cg job uh of his face like looking it's almost like floating around (laughs) like it's it's not (laughs) It's not great. These are these are two hundred yeah. million dollar movies. Let's let's hire like fucking Weta or something to just like map a face. But uh, like I have an I I can get that friggin' like uh, deep fake app and and do it better. But uh, yeah, the kitten face app. That's what make his face into a kitten's. Nobody has a problem with that. Yeah, yeah. The rest of the time, he's like that lawyer. I, I'm not a cat. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Just the whole time. I'm not a cat. Yeah, we, Paul Walker, always a catter. We, we know, Brian, you're not a cat. Just a lot of... <laughs> that would be... You know what? I would... T- uh, legitimately, I would talk to um, his estate, like him, his family or whatever, and just say, could we please have a scene where I'm on a phone, like we're on a video phone call, and he can't get the filter off? That's why you can't see his face. So you just get somebody who sounds like him. Like right. a, like a sound alike or whatever, and then you just get him go, and then you just have like a cat filter or whatever filter, and he's like, I can't get this filter off. Anyways, best of luck on a the show. Sound alike, yeah. yeah. I think that's, that's what they do when somebody's ripping you off, and you know what do you call those things where you pay and they're like, Yo, it's me, this guy. Thanks for giving me money. Happy birthday. Oh, cameo. Yeah, cameo. So it's yeah. like you got like Kanye West and it's cat. Sorry, I can't take this cat face off. <laughs> Happy birthday. It's me, Kanye West. Like, Whoa, Kanye West. Dude, we just came into the new scam market, man. This is I like know. getting vanilla MasterCard numbers out of old people. Yeah, no doubt, right? We're going to freaking fake cameo. Where it at? <laughs> that would be amazing. Has anybody cameo to cameo? Then we gotta like, we gotta do a deep dig because that would be hilarious. He <laughs> just says word up twenty five oh, thou. I would love like how sad would it be? It's sad enough to watch friggin' uh, Virgil with his balls hanging out in cameo. That was a real thing, by the way. Did I tell you about Virgil that? with his balls? I think we meant. I might have mentioned that in another episode, but he was literally he did a cameo like Virgil it, the wrestler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, it's like a shot of him and he's sitting on his bed. It looks like he's sleeping at a YMCA and, uh, he's, and he's got the camera set up and he's sitting there and he's got a hole in his shorts and his fucking ball sack is hanging out of his shorts. <laughs> there's, there's no mistake like going to see my granddad and he's just sitting like, he's, they're just there the whole time. And he's like, yeah, so, uh, I wanted to wish, uh, I wanted to wish you a happy birthday and, uh, like all this stuff. And he's just. Those are your balls. Thanks for hanging. Happy birthday. Here's Virgil's ball. <laughs> that, that, that's I mean, how many times have I asked that for Christmas? Like, the, my Lord. The gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> right. uh, um, I'm going to segue out into uh, our last piece of... <laughs> I know eh? there's no getting out of it. So let's just, <laughs> let's just go. Um, but I'm going to segue out into our last piece of news before we announce next week's movie. And that is that Edgar Wright is directing a, an adaptation of Stephen King's the running man. 
Oh, no way. Yeah, so it's not going to be a remake of the movie because the movie was a really... Yeah, it's going to be all the book. And just to, like, uh, knock out a few points of, like, differences between the movie and the book, uh, first one is that's not in an arena, so they can go, like, anywhere. It's not, like, a set area. The person's job is just to escape. So he can go anywhere he wants in the world. He can fly. He just has to like get hard there. target. Yeah. And in addition to the hunters chasing him, he's also being chased by cops. So like, and so anybody can catch Why? him. Be- that's just part of the game. And in the game, you have to steal like, Oh, I saw some ho-hos as I was running yeah. past. So you come back here. Yeah, I don't, oh, I'm sorry. They, the guy who ran the store was clearly, yeah, it's just Long part of it. Yeah. And, and the reason that Ben Richards does it isn't like, oh, he's forced into it because he was arrested or whatever. It's it's a super dystopian world where like poverty, it, like everybody is in mega poverty. His daughter is super sick and they can't afford to treat her. And his wife has like turned to prostitution to make them some money. So he agrees. Oh, there's got to be the woman. Why didn't he turn to prostitution? Right. He's yeah, trash. That's what I'm saying. Well, maybe she was hotter. I don't know. There's a market for everything, man. Double up your income. Yeah, you have to be. Exactly. Or at least start an OnlyFans or something. (laughs) Yeah, Uh, like, come on, dude. Exactly. Uh, But then the other part is how you make money off of this thing. So you get paid $100 per hour that you avoid capture and stay alive. Then I have a question about this when I'm done, too. A hundred dollars per hunter and or cop that you kill. And then if you and then if you last the whole 30 days, you get a billion dollars. 30 days 30 days you have to survive and is that being, the actual book that's stuff? the book that's the stuff directly from the book i looked that up today days. jesus christ so, you're gonna be like john wick for 30 days but now here's my question so if you're getting paid a hundred dollars per hour that you avoid capture and stuff but say you make it 29 days but then you get killed because they are trying they're not trying to like catch you and it's like hope oh, snatched you now here's the money you've earned what happens with that money? Do you does it go to? They don't give it to you. Well, I'm thinking, does it go to your family? Is that why he's like doing it? Because he's like, oh, okay, well, if I get killed, at least hopefully I'll last long enough and I'll get my my family some real money. Or is all of that just complete nonsense? And it's either you make it the 30 days or you get nothing. I'll bet you they sell it to the guy. They'll be like, yo, Arnold. Yeah. They'll be like, if you make it 30 or if you make it 15. The money that you've accrued will go to your family, but it won't. Yeah. Like the screw job when they said, if you get through, like you win, right? In the end of the original one, and they found out everybody's dead because they yeah. were killing them all. Well, and this is um, like not to get into, I, I knew how this book ended prior to this and not to get he into runs. spoilers about it. Yeah, he, he's a running man. and yeah. uh, But you find out like a lot of, like a bunch of stuff is revealed and then the whole goddamn thing turns into a Greek tragedy and it goes dark. Oh, Lord. It, go, it goes uh, like a special, it goes like Stephen King on uh, oxycodone dark. Oh, Jesus. Like, That's always the problem with a lot of these Stephen King books, man. It's like yeah. the last 50 pages, I'm like, dude, I just read three thousand pages and in 50 pages you just ruined everything. Yeah. yeah. Fun piece of trivia for this book too. He wrote it in a week. Really? Yeah. He wrote the whole book in a Oh week. my god, well guy writes like fifteen books a month. I Every know. time when chapters or whatever is open, do there be a new Stephen King book? Yeah. Like I was like, I just came here yesterday and there's now there's a new one. I know. And then on your way is out in the they're putting up another these? new one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, imagine if everything was just the Kindle, if there was no um if there were no like actual physical books, you'd probably be reading a book and it's just like, I was three quarters of the way through this. Now I'm only like one third of the way through this. Like it got longer while I've been reading it. Oh my God. Yeah. He's like re he's like Stanley Kubrick. He's just like <laughs> adding pages. And as you're reading. Yeah. You're just still going. He's like, I wrote three sequels to it and it's now all part of one book. It's like you're on a page and suddenly it just crosses out in like a big black marker. You're like, what the hell? Like, yeah. All right. Uh, so next week's movie, I actually, for a brief moment, because we recorded ahead and stuff, I forgot what next week's movie was and I had to look it up again, but we've got it. Uh, next week, we are going to take our first dip into the pool that is Rodney Dangerfield. Woo! Celebrating. Oh, I like what you did there. Yeah. Uh, celebrating Dipping into the pool of Rodney Dangerfield. You get it. And we're going to yeah. show him some respect, God damn it! And we're going to watch Back to School. Let's have a listen to the trailer. 
Guess who's getting some class? I'm going to college. Rodney Dangerfield's going back to school. And that's what I call marine biology. Hey, boys, here's a couple of pens in case you learn how to write. Okay. When I used to dream about going to college, this is the way I always pictured it. Wait a minute, when did you dream about going to college? When I used to fall asleep in high school. Here's a book on sex education. Let me see that, huh? The world's oldest living freshman. Well, he left out the most important thing. Where to get it? Science! Good teacher. <laughs> he really seems to care. <laughs> about what, I have no idea. Yeah, a little something for the kids. Okay, take that. It's okay, huh? I don't have any kids. No, because we're here. Get yourself some kids. We're here. Tuck it all, all right? What a woman. She is the teacher. I know. I like teachers. Do something wrong, they make you do it over again. <laughs> What do you say you and I have dinner tonight? Actually, I'd like to join you, but I have class tonight. Why don't you call me sometime when you have no class? He's not just the big man on campus. Hey, folks, it's on me. Shakespeare for everyone, okay? Uh, you too, honey. Who I'd like to tame your shrew. He's the wildest man on campus. Shake it up, baby! Say when. Right after this drink. <laughs> Rodney Dangerfield, back to school. Baby! All right, guys. So that was the trailer. <laughs> we laugh because we were just having a, I was just having a meltdown during the trailer. Uh, but yeah, so that's what we're, what we're catching next week. Uh, we hope you guys tune in and find us then. Uh, but you can find us now on miscastcommentary.com. Email us podcast at miscastcommentary.com. Uh, go on Twitter at miscast podcast. I'm at miscast Joe. I changed it. And Todd's at Miscast Todd. I just spit my beverage out. <laughs> <laughs> Something's different. Uh, Boom. That's our twist ender for that one. Yep. Follow us on Instagram at Miscast Commentary and all those other wonderful fun things. Find us on Facebook. You just Google us. You'll find us. We're the first like 600 results as it turns out. Uh, so until then, keep it, keep it sleazy, friends. Huh? Right. Yeah. Keep it in your pants. Did I? Was that was that enough confidence? Yes. All right, guys. We'll catch you next Sweetie? time. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. This has been Miscast Commentary with your hosts Joe Finley and Todd Murray. Executive producer Joe Finley. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen. Visit www.miscastcommentary.com for all news related to the podcast. Miscast Commentary is a Miscast Media Production.